Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to talk a little bit about password spraying. And so if you're not using this technique during your engagements, I mean, you're really leaving a lot on the table. It's a really easy way to, you know, to just obtain uh, additional credentials, different user accounts, different access, and really kind of streamline the whole, uh, you know, pen test or red team, uh, you know, engagement. So, um, you know, so there's a, this, this video is going to be Broken into two parts, you know, this first couple of minutes, I'm going to talk a little bit about it, a little bit about, you know, different protocols you can use, um, and then I'm going to go into a demo and, and show you a couple of different tools and, and techniques of, uh, of doing the spray. So the first thing is, like, what is password spraying, right? So so password spraying is in the, in the, is in the brute force family, right? And I think everybody's familiar with what a brute force, you know, attempt is. You have, you have one user, and then you try multiple passwords against that user, and eventually you know, what will happen is it will lock out. Now, it won't lock out all the time, right? So there's gonna be applications, there's gonna be environments where, you know, they don't have any policies enforced and you can just beat at it as much as you want and hopefully, you know, you, you find a password. But in most environments, what you're gonna encounter is that there's some type of password policy. And uh, it's usually, you know, between three and five uh, attempts and after that, you know, it locks out and, you know, that's that. And so if you have a list of users and you're trying to brute force all the users, you're going to lock all the users account. You don't lock all the users out. Your, your, your client's not going to be very happy and uh, you're, you're not going to be able to access any of the users. And so now the password spraying. And so password spraying is similar, but in the reverse. So instead of having one user and a bunch of passwords, you have a bunch of users and one password. And so um, what I have here is uh, a typical password that's used. Now, during this technique, you're going to keep in mind that, you know, this technique is as strong as the passwords that you're using. So if you're using a password that nobody will ever use ever, it's not going to work. And so you have to use something that users are prone. You have to, use, you have to select a password that users are prone to selecting. And typically what you're going to see is that, each individual season, they're going to pick that season and then that year. So it's summer right now where I am. And so summer 19, because it's 2019, would be a good password. Other passwords could be um, summer 2019, so that the full year. Um, and as those seasons change, you change your password. Um, what I have right here is it's about every 90 days, typically a password a, a password policy will will enforce the user to change the password, which is a which is roughly around the, the, the seasons as they change. So, in a nutshell, um, there's no lockouts here, and so that's kind of what password spraying is. And so uh, there's different ways to do password spraying. You know, it's not just one way. Um, the technique is sort of the same, but the protocols are different. And that opens up a lot of wiggle room for us, the attacker, when we're going after these organizations. And what I mean by that is they're not all detected the same. So SMB is going to have a different event codes than LDAP and Kerberos. And so if you have, like, let's say Splunk or something configured in your environment, and you're looking at password spraying for, from an LDAP, from, a, uh, from an SMB perspective, if you run LDAP attack, it's, it's, it's not going to alert. If you run Kerberos attack, it's not going to alert. And so in more, in more mature environments where they're starting to detect on some of these protocols um, that are being leveraged for password spraying, there's something to keep a note here. First of all, what I usually see is SMB is usually the first to be detected. LDAP is usually the second, and then Kerberos is the third. So if you're out in a client site or you're doing a pen test or red team environment, I would try this one first, especially if it's a, uh, a mature environment. And this one is fast. It's like so much faster than the other ones. And you'll see in the demos coming up that, that this is extremely fast. And so, you know, why, why, do you, why do password spraying? You're going to get more creds, more user accounts are going to be compromised, which is going to lead to more access, which is going to assist with lateral movement. 
and uh, and that's basically it. I mean, this you know, if you're lucky, you can get a bunch of user accounts and start kind of moving throughout the network. Also, if you don't have access to the network, this could be access. This could be your first foothold. So if you sit down, you go to a client site, you know, you, you don't have any creds at all. You sort of have an idea what their username convention is. You can go ahead and populate a list of users and just blindly start trying to, you know, password spray, you know, users that, that might be on the network. And, uh, and that kind of, that's a good segue into like how to find out user, user names. So if you're on a network and you have credentials and you know, you're, you're on a system and you're on that domain, um, you can use the good old net user domain commands. And so if you run this, this will give you all the users, um, that are in that environment. But if you don't know what the user names are, sometimes what you can do is you can go to this website called Hunter IO and uh, I'll put all this stuff down in the description so you don't have to look for it but Hunter IO um, they have a lot of email addresses here so you can go and search for email addresses so this is also really good for for phishing organizations so what I'll just tape this type H and uh, here's Healthline uh, you know we'll just blindly select it and you can kind of see here and by the way, this is blurred out, but if you, uh, if you log in, it will show you, it will show you the, full, uh, the full name. It looks like they might be using some type of like first name, last name convention, right? So this could be a jump off point. You figure out that, hey, they're using first name or first initial last name. You write a Python script. You go out and get the, uh, you know, the, the U.S. census list or something with, or you go find what the most common last names are and you just start appending you know the letter uh you know the letter of the alphabet to everyone so like a bobby b bobby c bobby and you just make this big list and then you start going the, the password spread so that kind of covers that so now it's sort of about you know password spraying now so what tools what techniques can you use and so i'm going to show you a couple different ways you can do this on windows and then I'll show you at least one way you can do it. Um, you know, you can do it on, on like on Kali Linux or something like that. So the first uh, the first tool is it's called Domain Password Spray, and it uses the LDAP protocol, which is which is pretty fast, right? So so the way something like that looks is uh, you go ahead and, and download it. And like I said, I'll I'll put the links in the description so you can you can download them yourself. And so I just, I just copied it to this, uh, this file called the password spray.ps1. And so the first thing you want to do is you know, load up PowerShell and then, you know, execution bypass. And then once that's up and running, um, you basically just want to, um, what is it, load module, right? Import module. So module password spray so now it's in and so now we should be able to invoke I think it's called domain password spray okay so uh, now that you have this loaded you can put a tick mark and kind of you know go through the options here and so the first one is going to be the domain which is test.com and this is my fake domain this is an actual test test.com and then the next is going to be your user list. So I, I have a, a list of usernames that I've populated. It's about 500 users and then a password. And the password here I'm going to use is the common password summer 19. Okay. So we hit enter. Um, so I'm going to say, Hey, there's 530 accounts that I'm looking to, uh, password spray. Do I want to? Yes. And so that took about maybe four seconds and it turned back one success. So J Hall, J Hall user, right? Or J Halls is a user of password summer 19. So, Hey, that's pretty awesome. In a bigger environment, you know, with thousands of users, it's very possible for you to get, you know, five or six users, if not more back. And so that's what that looks like from a, from a, uh, from all that perspective. Now you can go look at the codes and see the, what codes you know LDAP looks like over a network if you want to. You can run it through Wireshark, take a look at a domain, or take a take a look at the logs and see what that looks like. 
So the second tool here that I want to show is curb root, right? So curb root. So this is going to leverage curb rows. This is the one I was telling you that not a lot of companies look for. And it is really fast. So think about what, um, so think about how fast that other one took, right? So here we're going to uh, run a couple options here. So one is the domain. And then the next, I believe, actually, if you, I believe if you take a look at what this looks like on the website, it says, uh, let me check my notes here. Curb root. So you want to select the option. So we're going to select the option password spray. And then uh, looks like it's going to be password spray. We set the domain, then the users and the password. So password spray, which there's the option there, password spray. And then we're going to select a domain, which is going to be test.com. I already have that. Um, and this is going to be our user list, which is user and then summer 19. And look how fast that was, right? Like, so 5.3 seconds, we basically went through that entire thing. So this is really fast. I mean, if you're, I mean, if you have, you know, 20,000 accounts or something like that, like this will blow through them in seconds. Um, so something to think about here too is like, all right, let's say we, we ran that test, we ran it with, you know, summer 19. Well, let's say you didn't get any results back. Well, the next step would be then maybe select another password, maybe select summer 2019, try that, see if that works. And then maybe go ahead and select a third option of whatever. Maybe it's a baseball team in a local area. So. Maybe it's like the Yankees 19 or, or something, depending on if you're in New York or, or, or wherever, and try it a third time. Generally, I stop after the third attempt because I don't want to lock in user accounts out. And then the next day, usually about 24 hours, you can come back, you can start it over again, right? So try a couple different new passwords that are outside of that. So that covers the LDAP one, that covers the Kerberos on Windows, and like I said, I'll put those links below. And so the last one is uh, running from Kali Linux. So let's take a look. And then so in Kali, essentially you're going to use uh, the Metasploit framework. This technique is, is going to be using SMB. So, you know, four, port 445 um, was this, you know, server message block. Um, and like I said, this one usually, eh, it's not usually, but not more than likely is, is monitored depending on if it's a secure environment or not. But you know, I've most of the places that I go to, um, they, they never detect this. It's usually more, more into our environments. So, um, so you can go down here, let's go ahead and search, um, yep. go ahead here and search SMB and it's a auxiliary module called SMB logon. So here we go, SMB logon. So we can copy this and use it. And there's a couple things we have to set um, domain, our host, uh, user pass, and then uh, the user file. So we'll set our host. I'm using the domain controller in this case, but you can use any, any workstation on the network. It doesn't have to be a domain controller. Um, set uh, SMB domain. Just test.com. Uh, set user file. So this is going to be basically the same list of users that I used in the other examples. Um, and then um, we're going to set SMB pass. So you could also adjust like the threads if you wanted to go a little bit faster. Sometimes I feel like it messes with with the results, so I, I generally stay away from that. Um, and but that's that's it. Once that's all loaded, you can go ahead and run it, and you can tell already. I mean, how slow it is compared to Kerberos. 
So that's, I mean, that's generally why I use it. It's just, it's just so much faster. Um, and if you guys saw that, that quick little pause, that was a, a successful authentication attempt. So let's give us another second. And then all these reds are failed authentication attempts. Oh, and there we go. So right here, here's the little green bubble. And what you could do too, like if you catted this out to a file, you could search for, you know, search for the plus marks or I think it's also stored in the database too. So that's it in a nutshell, you know, that's, that's password spraying. Um, I mean, you saw a couple different techniques. Just keep in mind that, you know, picking a good password is key, right? So make sure you, you stick with the seasons. If that doesn't work, maybe look at, you know, baseball teams or the company name or even welcome one, um, let me in. Like if you go and take a look at the worst passwords, those are generally passwords that the users are using. Um, Kerberos is super fast, right? We saw how fast it was. It's also um, a lot stealthier. So a lot of companies aren't looking for Kerberos. So you can kind of fly under the radar with that. And um, if you need passwords, hunt, or I'm sorry, if you need usernames, Hunter.io is a good place to kind of get an idea of what the username convention is. So then you can kind of start populating uh, your own user lists to be a little bit more targeted. And uh, I think that's it. So uh, enjoy, I hope, you, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, take a look in the description. I'm gonna put a couple links down here to some of these tools that I used. And uh, good luck.